Toyota has been killing the SUV game for years. They got the 4Runner, the Sequoia, the Prado, and at the top of the proverbial totem pole, the Land Cruiser. The LC has been a global favorite since 1957. And let me tell you, I love these things. My mom used to have one and she would drive me around in it. Here's a picture of us in it and it's a real picture. So I have a certain amount of nostalgia for these off-road legends. And if anyone were to take that away from me, I don't know. Sorry about this, very unprofessional. Oh, hello. Hey, Jeremiah, how are you doing? Mr. Toyota, how are you? Yeah, I know, I it's Mr. Friend. Toyota, from the Toyota Motor Company. We're friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, sir, I'm actually in the middle of filming a, an episode. Can I call you back? No. no. Okay, well, well, what do you want to tell me? Look, I just want to call you and let you know uh, that the Toyota Land Cruiser, we're going to be discontinuing. You're discontinuing the Land Cruiser? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah hold on, hold on, no, no, no. No, 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 you can't do that. Yeah, I don't know. I no, 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 don't, don't do that. No, you, I've no, no, don't do that. No! After 60 years, Toyota is discontinuing the Land Cruiser. And while that sucks, it did get me thinking about why these trucks are so good. From sand to snow, mud to seawater, the LC has built up a reputation of being able to handle the toughest of terrain that Miss Mother Nature could throw at it. So today on B2B, we're gonna pay homage to the best SUV ever made. We're gonna look at why it's so good and get the inside scoop on how Lexus might be front and center of this legendary model's off-roading future. Let's go. You can find a Land Cruiser in just about any part of the world, whether it's the Sahara Desert or the middle of Siberia, there's at least one LC in every country in the world. I fact checked that, that's a fact, don't, you don't need to look it up. But after 60 years, Toyota has decided to discontinue one of the most esteemed names in off-roading. But why? Why is Toyota discontinuing one of their longest running and best selling models? Well, last night I flew to Plano, Texas and snuck into Toyota headquarters to get you guys the inside scoop. And let me tell you, it definitely involves a sneaky little plan from their rich younger brother, Lexus. Oh, that guy is just a hedge fund manager. But before you can understand Lexus's role in this, you need to understand why the Land Cruiser was so admired in the first place. And that boils down to one single word, maximum reliability. And a major component you need for reliability is your engine. The 2UZFE in the J100 and J200 is a 4.7 liter V8, and it is so good that Toyota put it in many of their other vehicles, like the Tundra, the 4Runner, the Sequoia, and the Lexus GX470. I got one in my Lexus GX470. The 2UZ from the get-go was engineered to last, and one of the most important things you can do to make an engine last is keep the temperature down. Toyota used lots of methods to keep the engine cool, but one of the features they employed was the use of oil jets. Picture a piston and a cylinder. As that piston goes up and down during combustion, it heats up and in turn heats the block up and the rest of the engine components. So to cool down the pistons, Toyota utilized something called oil jets to maintain a proper temperature. It's kind of a funny design, but at the base of the cylinder is a little jet that yeah, you guessed it, it squirts out oil. That jet shoots oil upwards and hits the bottom side of the piston head, cooling it down. That oil then runs back down to the cylinder and is cycled through to be shot out again. So you got suck, squeeze, bang, blow, squirt. We're gonna have to change up the song. Joe, can you get on that, please? Suck, squeeze, bang, blow, gas it up and off you go. Squirt, 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 squirt. The 2UZ finally came to an end though, and Toyota gave the J200 what we have now, the 3UR FE. This engine, it's a 5.7 liter V8, and it brought the Land Cruiser the same Toyota reliability with some added torque for a little bit more fun. It features its own forged steel crankshaft, forged connecting rods, and aluminum alloy pistons with a resin coating. The forged internals in the 3UR really set this engine apart in terms of reliability and its brilliant successor. If you really want to learn why forged internals are so great, check out this video here after you're done watching this. And while you're at it, hit that like and subscribe button. That really helps us out. Let's the algorithm know that we're doing a good job. 
Now, like all beautiful art, it starts with a good canvas. And all great cars start with a good frame as well. The Land Cruiser, it's no exception. Going back to the J80 series Land Cruiser, which featured a steel ladder type frame that was great for off-roading and was reinforced in the later J100 model, reportedly being 50% stronger and more rigid, using reinforced galvanized steel, which stiffened up the chassis and helped prevent things like rust. Toyota, at one point had a history with rusty frames. I don't want to throw them under the bus, but I had a truck that <laughs> had a rusty frame. Toyota switched it up with the J200 though and shortened the frame and made it 20% stronger with thicker reinforced steel. Now the important thing that all these frames share, however, is that they're all assembled in a very similar way. Take the latest Land Cruiser, the J200, which flaunts a welded steel body shell combined with a full-size steel ladder frame. That's a mouthful, so let me explain. The J200 is a body on frame construction, which means the body sits on the frame of the car. Now this is different from the more common unibody frame where the body and chassis are one cohesive piece. All the driving stresses passes through the entire vehicle on a unibody. With a body on frame construction, all the stress runs through the frame. The unibody is more rigid because the whole body absorbs the flexing. But this becomes a problem when you take unibodies off road. The whole car gets put under stress, including things like the windows, the doors, and the hatches. With the entire body flexing, these doors and hatches become distorted, which sucks because then you can't open or close them. So for extreme off-roading purposes, this frame has a little flex, which offers a good amount of articulation while putting zero stress on the body of the vehicle. Of course, the frame is doing a lot of work down there. So Toyota, they didn't spare any expense and made the whole thing steel. And if that wasn't good enough, the body is fully steel as well. Now body on frame vehicles usually have higher center of gravity, which offers good clearance on the rocks, but it isn't so great for handling on the pavement. So leave it to Toyota to design a suspension system that gives drivers the best of both worlds on and off the road. Enter in KDSS. So what is KDSS, you ask? Well, it stands for Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System. Sounds pretty fancy, right? Well, yeah, it is. And it's one of the reasons that the J200 is such a powerhouse. In order to understand how the KDSS works, we need to understand what a sway bar's role in a car is first and see why that's important. See, when you turn or swerve a vehicle, the weight is being shifted to one side of the car. The heavier the vehicle, the faster you're going, or the tighter the turn, that's gonna influence how much weight is being shifted to one side. So if you make a hard right, a lot of the weight is getting thrown to the left side of the car. This causes the outside, or in the case, left side, suspension to compress. The sway bar's job is to control the body roll and help minimize that. Since the sway bar is linked to the wheels on both sides, it helps compress the suspension on the wheels inside the turn, which prevents rolling during a turn. Stiff sway bars are great for the pavement, but when you're off-road, sway bars become more of a hindrance than they are help. See, in off-road scenarios, tires need as much movement as possible to gain as much traction as possible. But sway bars are traditionally fixed to your car without any room for adjustability. Now this is where the KDSS comes in. The folks at Toyota decided to replace one of those fixed points with a cylinder that has a piston in the center of it. These cylinders are connected to each other via two little hose lines that run along the chassis. Each hose line has its own independent oil reservoir. So when one piston gets pushed up, the other one gets pushed down. The more compressed a cylinder is, the more stiff that sway bar is going to be. And likewise, the less compressed a cylinder is, the less engaged the sway bar is, you got more room for the tires to droop down and find something to grip. So how does KDSS function during turns on pavement? Well, let's say you're making another right-hand turn and all of your weight swings to the left. The left-hand side suspension is going to compress and the right-hand side suspension is going to expand. Since we have cylinders in both the front and rear, both pistons will be sending each other an equal amount of oil canceling each other out. So this stabilizes both cylinders and allows our thick sway bars to do their job and keep the car straight on the road. Now for an off-road scenario, let's imagine your back tire loses grip because it's floating over a little divot in the dirt. But naturally, your front tires are gonna wanna compress in order to carry that extra weight. And your front piston is gonna send that oil pressure to your rear piston, which is gonna push down and loosen that sway bar, allowing for more articulation. Get you moving forward. Now getting that forward movement is a full-time, full-wheel drive powered by a front, center, and rear differential. So when you make a turn, each wheel has to travel at different speeds. You can see this in the tracks your car makes when you turn in mud or snow. 
The differential, it allows different amounts of power to be delivered to each wheel. And generally, most four wheel drive cars have a front and rear differential. The central differential is the icing on the cake, where it allows the front and rear axles to turn at different speeds, while the front and rear wheels also get to turn at different speeds. The center diff is pretty essential to this car since it is a full-time four wheel drive and it allows it to deliver power to front and rear axles smoothly on the pavement all without damaging its own gears. This is just another great feature that the Land Cruiser's versatility has for extreme off-road capability and being able to go get some sweet groceries. They're the grocery getter now, guys. They're, that's just what they are. So now that we know why the Land Cruiser is so good, I can let you in on a little tiny secret I discovered while I was in Plano, Texas. See, Lexus is planning to steal the Land Cruiser. <laughs> Mm-hmm, that's right. We all know that the Lexus LX570 is basically a slightly more hopped up version of the Land Cruiser. And it's only a few thousand dollars more than the Land Cruiser. So Toyota thought, hey, if a buyer can spend $85,000, they can probably spend $90,000. No one is hucking this thing through the desert anymore unless you just got money to burn. They're dropping Susie off over at soccer practice. Bye Susie, good job, hope you score a goal. But if you don't, it's okay, you have a trust fund. So yes, it is sad to see the nameplate go, but there's more to the story. Now I don't know exactly how, but someone at Lexus found out I was at Toyota headquarters. I carry around my birth certificate. Call me crazy, but yes, I know, you're all wondering. His first name's Brent. Yeah, it is. It's amazing, isn't it? And they told me about a super secret concept project that they thought could be a real successor to the Land Cruiser name. So they invited me out to Joshua Tree to check it out. This is the Lexus J201, Lexus's concept of a ready to buy off-roader built on the LX570 platform. The J201 is supercharged. It makes 550 horsepower, and it's got some crazy upgrades like aftermarket control arms, which help with off-road articulation and handling. You can drive this thing pretty much underwater. It's like a submarine. It's got a front bumper, which looks freaking sick, and it's got a winch to pull out your dumb friends when they get stuck. Now, the J201, it's just a concept right now, but really, I think I know why they built it. As a Lexus guy, we're a bit envious of all the TRD additions that Toyota get. And while it's Lexus boys, we don't get anything. So this is Lexus dipping their toes into the high-end off-road game to compete with, I don't know, cars like the Defender. And what better way to do that than build a car that could come from the factory looking like this, but with a warranty. I don't know, we're in the speculation zone. Lexus hasn't told us any of this, but I, I put money on it that they're gonna build a car like this that you can buy from your dealership. And then the great thing is 20 years from now, you and I can buy one of these things used. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Uh, follow us here on Donut at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Follow me on TikTok on Suck My Truck. I just bought a new truck. Maybe I'm gonna do a build series on it. Until next week, bye for now.